What's up, everybody? Good morning. Happy Thursday. Hope you all had a great Wednesday on my day off from doing videos. <clears throat> Let's get into it. So we got a lot of tickers we're going to talk about. First one I'm going to talk about here is BTC because obviously BTC is running parabolic here. <clears throat> Excuse me, guys. Congratulations, by the way. Huge congratulations. Massive move. New all-time highs. You love it. You love to see it. You love to see people making money, especially after the turbulence that it's had for the past three years. This is the point where you anticipate there's going to be some major sell-off. There's going to be a major sell-off here. So you have to be prepared for those zones where potentially it's going to come from. Um, I'm going to talk about what I see. No matter what, we have to look for an all-time high retest. So it might continue to run, right? It might continue to run, but we have to look for this all-time high retest. It's very rare you don't see these scenarios take place. Major level in the market, it stalls there, it breaks out over it, you need to come and revisit it. Just rule of thumb in trading. Previous resistance needs to come in and act as support. So I would look as BTC bulls in, it doesn't mean it's today, it doesn't mean it's tomorrow, it doesn't mean it's this week but I would look for this eventually to happen. So to be prepared for this, a back test of the 20,000 range, right? 19,642 in this range. So if we look at this on the daily chart in here, everything's ripping right now. So if I look at this last move, and this is very impulsive, this move in here would make sense for us to be a topping zone. However, we had the FOMC yesterday. FOMC yesterday was bullish for crypto. It was bullish for gold. It was bullish for silver. So we're seeing movements in all those obviously Bitcoin because it was already in the most bullish state trading near or at all time highs. It's seeing a much bigger move versus where silver and gold are trying to come out of a consolidation phase and they're putting in inverse head and shoulders that are breaking bull versus something that was already trading at all time highs. So when you're an all time high, you got a lack of resistance. You got FOMO. FOMO is coming into the chart right now. This is complete FOMO because it's running vertically. When you have FOMO and you're running in euphoric mode, that's when you look for your greatest potential risk of a sell off. So that's what I'd be prepared for. So I'm looking from this move in here. It back tested the golden pocket. It held. First thing, I would look for back test of this upper trend line, see if it's going to come into play. It's not that notable. It's just something I was watching. We'll see if it comes into play. But a back test of the zone eventually. So we're here 236110. That's that target 1618 extension. If we break up further, 25k that's what i'd be watching on btc hey listen sbx looking really good all-time highs nasdaq all-time highs everything we want is happening for the melt up santa claus rally everything i talked about in the weekend video talking about potentially getting up to 4k 4k that's the level we're going to be looking for in the coming weeks i think next week's going to be extremely bullish but we're going to have to monitor the consolidation periods up into that event okay there's going to be consolidation we can see what's happening right now on this eight hour chart we are running straight okay no eight hour higher low we've had some indecision in here it was a bull flag broke bull popped up over we're going to look for an eight hour higher low when we look at the consolidation we're going to have to make sure the consolidation is healthy we're going to want to see consolidation that more so looks like this versus this right we don't want to see that that's what we're going to be looking for so a couple a couple lines here i'm watching on this uh, market here the overall market top 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 so from a line chart perspective you can see we're already rejecting it we're falling under it from a wix you can see we stalled 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 and again potentially we're stalling in here ideally we don't ideally we just break up over this and we go to the upper trend line in the channel and then we come back and we hold this as our support and then we're, how we're going to be looking at this is pop support pop back and that's how we're going to be looking moving forward that's what i want to see same thing with the nas if we look at the nas here we're right there right now this is that trend line from our recent tops top 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 again we're right there right now and we're starting to stall in that range so we want to see what the action looks like when the bell rings we've had a bullish futures market the bell might ring and we might start our consolidation day and we do our consolidation phase during the day and then they pump it in the overnight futures market again it could be something along those lines ideally we just pop up over hit this upper trend line first target here 12974 on the nas and then we start thinking up right and these numbers are the numbers we will hit with f 
with an if SPX is hitting the 4K, this is where we start thinking. We don't start thinking here. This is the initial first target I had. So first target, looks like we're gonna get there. We've gotta get up over the separate trend line first. Ideally, make it our support. That's what I'm gonna be watching. Let's get into the tickers that are requested out there because there's a lot of them. Fisker, so Fisker is looking pretty interesting here because it's basing and when you have a base, you look for accumulation and then you look for a run. So if we look at Fisker here, pre-market, pretty much flat, not doing so much. The main thing for me is gonna be the volume. Once we see there's a big volume spike, we know, hey, we're out of the zone, we're breaking away, we've seen enough accumulation. So that's what I'll be watching right now. It's just an inside bar, that's what I'll be watching today. Inside bar, does a bull break, does a bear break. Trading under the eight exponential. Volume's dropping off. With the volume dropping off and we're trading in the zone, it tells me we're likely to trade a little bit more. Sideways, let's see, do we get a spike? Last time we saw Fisker run was pre-market. Pre-market volume started to come in. So if we see that again, we could get a little bit excited. But as of right now, the volume's tight. We're trading in a tight range. It's an inside bar. That's how we're watching potential accumulation in the zone. Also, if we break down, if we lose our support in here, we break down and we get no follow through, that's going to be, that's going to be another buy signal. Drops, no follow through, pops, bullish reversal hammer, and then we go. Uber in Gen 55 calls. I believe Uber is all time high, right? Yeah, Uber is all time high. It's in consolidation mode now. Okay, 55 calls for Jan. So depending on this consolidation, you don't want to get back too much of this move. Okay, coming out of blue skies, lost the eight exponential here on the daily. We might be looking for a back test of this zone, right? We might be looking for a back test of this zone. So I would be aware of that. And the further we consolidate, the more out the money you get, the harder that trade is going to become. So just something to consider here. If we look at this base that we had in here and this pop, what do we do? Last resource for you in that trade, in my opinion, would be not to lose the 0.786. You can see right now, we've already lost the golden pocket. Now, where's the 0.786 on this, on this trade? And I don't have it drawn to the T. So let's get it to the T. Right in there, 49.96. So it'd be a red flag to lose 49.96 for that trade because it tells me we're not holding any supports in here. So we're gonna drop, we're gonna revisit this zone and then I would anticipate a lower high. And then a scenario that might play out is a head and shoulders pattern, right? When we come back up. So that's something I'd be aware of right now. Need to hold 49.96 today. Close above it. See a reversal candlestick. Four days of consolidation. Do we have any reversal pattern forming here on the hourly chart? Do we have a falling wedge? Yeah, there could be a little bit of a falling wedge here. And there is some bullish divergence on these new lows. So on this hourly chart, it's running pretty like pretty vertical down. Let me just double check this. Not really, not really, but there is some bullish divergence on this chart right now. So it could be a scenario where that hourly is gonna hold that 0.786 because you can see we're making new lows, but the RSI is not making new lows. Okay, we're trading flat, which is telling us the momentum is dying for this pressure to the downside. Need that reversal candlestick. So we're starting to see one here, a morning star. Need over that hourly eight exponential at least to start, don't wanna lose the 0.786. Silver in March calls. Long-term swing mindset. All right, let's check it out. So if we look at this in here, we've had a reversal. Okay, we broke that trend line that was pushing us down and we're breaking, well, we're about to test our daily. We broke daily higher low, higher high. So we broke this short-term trend change back in the bull favor. Now we're looking at the weekly resistance. We had an inverse head and shoulders in here. That is broken bull. That's great. FOMC was bullish, low volume nodes. It's looking pretty good. Right now, this is your focus, right? You wanna get up over this weekly resistance in here. And let's fix that up, because that didn't work. Right there, you get the point, 2611. Then we're gonna run into this range. And when we run into this range, we're gonna stall. We should stall, right? Unless the major volume is gonna come in and we're gonna run parabolic. But likely we're gonna stall at that point. If we look at this, from our top to our bottom, where the GP is, right? Lines up with all of that distribution in here. So break this zone, stall in the GP, back test, potentially hold, form some form of a bull flag, and then look for the larger move. That's what I'd be watching on silver.
SPLK. You're in 170 calls. So it looks like this name gap down on earnings, no further push down. You like when you see the no further push down on earnings, right? Which means we're basing out at these levels, similar to what we just did with Twitter. Pop, unable to break, breaks to new low, immediately gets no fall through, starts to grind back up and a huge gap up above. That's great. 163.37, trading a little bit higher here in the pre-market. We want to get that close over the eight exponential. And then just watch your resistance here at 169. Break 169, a lot of room to run based out that's looking pretty good right now i'd really be focused on the four hour okay four hour you want to see a four hour higher low higher high pattern form right now it's kind of just v-shaping we don't have a higher low on the four hour chart and we've got this little wick in here we got to deal with 163.98 and then we start looking up at our top palantir today's going to be the make or break day for us i i'm assuming on palantir so Main thing for me is it's been a good chart. We've made some money on it. So kind of sticking with it until it says it's over. It's not saying it's over yet. You know, what are you going to do now with this trend line? You know, uh, let's fix that up. This trend line, what are you going to do? It's not drawn correctly anymore. And now we're going to look at it from this perspective. I mean, we could, right? We could be looking at it from that perspective now. It doesn't really matter how we have it drawn. It matters how the market wants to respond. So, you know, potentially that's the scenario now. The thing for me is that although we're consolidating and you know we're not seeing a big bull move, we're not seeing any volume. So until we see exit volume, it's hard to trust that this is game over because it takes one little candlestick, one little push, and it pushes it right back up as what we started to see yesterday. So that's it. This is what I'm watching. For me, I will let this trade go if we break the golden pocket because from that perspective, you got to look at it from a different trade mindset. Now you're going to have to have a new trade idea. This trade idea is this pattern in here. And it's still in play. It is still valid. So this is what I'm watching. And we're going to need this to hold. If golden pocket breaks, this chart might still go to 40. It might still go to 50. Yeah, it might do all of those things. But we have to find a new way to play it. A new pattern. A new entry signal. A new thesis. It's got to hold that low. If it breaks that low, we're going into GP. Is it going to go just to straight GP and they just want in that zone and they pump it up? It'll be a little bit odd. I think right now we got to go. This is the day. This is a very important day. So 26.29 is a little bit of a higher open. We want to get over the four hour eight exponential. We want to see some volume coming in. Look at the volume. There is no bear volume, but there's also no bull volume. So we're waiting to see what's the spike. What's the reaction? What's the chart want to do? And if we are going to hold this low and break out, we're going to need some volume to do that. So that's what I'm watching today for my position on Palantir. Snap. What's Snap doing? Snap still trading at all time highs. Yeah, all time highs, looking really good. Higher open here, nice daily higher low. That would be a nice daily higher low right there. 50 to 29, new support, still holding the eight exponential. Volume's consistent, that's what you wanna see. Reminder, if this was a five minute chart, how would you be playing this? Algos, right? That's what it looks like right here, right now. So it's a daily chart, it takes more time to play out. So now that you have that reversal candlestick, you know that's your must hold zone. That's what I'll be watching, a little bit of a higher open. We're looking back at all time highs. 53.84 looks really good no divergence on the new high we might establish some new divergence but not the, that i'm too concerned about right now because we're holding the eight exponential and the volume's not giving us any red flags let me just see something here all right let's move on microsoft so i took microsoft calls yesterday 230s for jan 15 um Common shares playing as well. This looks like a good move. Like this looks like it's ready for the breakout. It's a laggard in the market. I mean, we saw a lot of triangles that have already broken bull. Uh, Microsoft spike in bull volume yesterday. Broke up over our key resistance in here. Closed right on that trend line. So the key today is that we close over the trend line and we start looking up at 228.12 resistance. That's it. That's all we're looking for. We like the pattern. We like everything, but we do not want to get stuffed. If we do not break yesterday's high, we're going to get the inside bar today. AI. So this started to move yesterday. Yeah, I saw this. This started to move yesterday. And we've got a beautiful pattern shaping up here. If you look at this on extended hours, we don't know where this upper trend line is going to form from. Okay. So we don't know. Where is it going to? We're going to find it. We're going to anticipate it will form. I'm going to anticipate there's going to be no new all-time high. 
So we're going to be looking for some stall in here because of the volume, right? The volume is not exciting. If the volume gets exciting, then we're going to say, oh, okay, no, it's going. It's on its run. So a couple of things we're going to do. We're going to look at our top. We're going to look at our bottom. And we're going to see the golden pocket and the 0.786. Golden pocket, we're there, right? We're there right now. So if we stall in here, it would make sense. We look for our triangle. If we hang around this range, if we see a spike in mobile volume, it's likely to run. So it's a really good chart to have on watch. There's a lot of hype behind this name. We came down, we consolidated, we're coming out of that consolidation. The volume is gonna be the key for us to say, hey, we're breaking out and we're gonna be looking up at a new all-time high. As of right now, we got a golden pocket that we gotta worry about and that four hour resistance right in there at that 124 range. Peloton, looked like Peloton was not seeing a higher open today in the pre-market, was a little bit down. 133.80 now, oh, now it's actually flat. Well, 134, so we had our huge run already. So this is this was really good to me this week, this trade. But we're running pretty hard here, right? And when we run pretty hard, this is why I started to take those positions off yesterday because it's like, okay, now we're getting a little bit extended. So now in my mindset for this is short term, right? Play a short term scenario in here because we're going to be too far extended. Like if we run today further, if, you know, consider we run today to 137, 138. Look where the eight exponential is, right? We'll make a new all time high, but we'll be too extended on the new all time high. So it'll be great. We hit a new all time high. And yes, we may still run to our target. And yes, I still want to participate in it. But I want to make sure I'm not in the mindset of just letting it mature right now because we could be looking for a harsh consolidation candle. As of right now, that would be great if we could hold that as our higher low, which is 133. And if we lose that, then we start thinking back in this zone in the 130s. We know they're being uplisted to the NASDAQ. There's two more days. If we continue to see buying pressure, momentum into the event, continue to play it. Too far extended, I keep my stops tight to make sure we're not giving back on this trade. So we're looking up at all time high. That's our next resistance on this chart. Mild resistance right there at 136 and then all time high, 139.75. I skipped NEO, didn't I? Okay. NEO, looking at 50 calls. So NEO got up over that upper trend line, trading a little bit higher here in the pre market. Looks like we've based. Volume's a little bit dry, so I would still look for some form of a pattern to shape up in here. You know, we'll look for something to develop in this range. Anticipate that we're not just going to bust back out to an all-time high. Okay, that's what I would be looking for. And we'll see how this develops. The volume is pretty light. It's not extensive volume, but the bear pressure is gone. So when the bear pressure is gone, we just run out of buyers. We have some supply in here. We have some resistance zones we've created. We look for a stall. Right in here, you can see it's been pretty strong resistance recently. Right in here. So that's the zone I'd be watching right now. So if you're thinking about getting 50 calls because that's out the money right now, is that I would wait on a form of consolidation because if you buy now, while we run into the 46, 47, you're gonna pay a higher premium. It's gonna hit a zone that's going to stall unless some major news or spike in volume that tells us something differently. Then you can buy those on the consolidation because the last thing you wanna do is to buy into momentum out the money right when the chart's about to hit a supply zone and stall. And that's the zone right in here. And if we could break up over the zone, we start thinking a little bit higher. We look at our top to our bottom and where's our FIB target. So right now that zone is going to line up with the 0.382. So that's going to be right now at 46. And then we start thinking about golden pocket at 50 to 51. But this zone, we should stall in here. And we'll see if we form an upper trend line, something along these lines. We don't know yet. We're going to have to see. NVDA. I haven't talked about this name in a while. So it looks like we have a nice rounded bottom in here. Okay, tight range in here right now. Let me just see what's happening here on the daily chart. Okay, not as strong as AMD, right? AMD is the one that's running right now. NVDA volume is very low. Look at the 20 day moving average, it's dropping off here. That's telling us there's gonna be a move here. There's a move coming on this chart. We're going to anticipate a spike in volume. Laggard in the market right now. Let me see from this perspective now. It looks like it was more of a channel in this range. We're right in the middle of the channel, but we're hanging out. We're hanging out in the zone. First thing, we want to break up over that 539. Volume's light. 
Look for some anomaly in the volume now. Do we see a spike in volume? Spike in volume tells us, okay, accumulation is done. We're going to be looking for a breakout on this chart. Spike in bear volume says distribution is done. We're going to drop down. It would it make sense right now. It doesn't seem in this market. You know, so I would still want to lean bullish and look for the bullish opportunity. And if you want a very low risk entry right now, stop at 527. Facebook, daily chart. And it looks like I lost my drawing in here on Facebook, which is a triangle. Okay, we've got a triangle in here in this range, right? That's up in there. Bottom has been seeing some buying, very similar to what we just saw with Amazon. Looks weak, looks weak. Bottom trend line holds, boom, and then it starts to run. 276.52, main focus is to break yesterday's high. Break yesterday's high, close over the eight exponential. It's gonna see a quick move. It should see a quick move. We could easily run on the chart to 288. So it's a good low risk setup right now. The problem with the chart is, if you look at the volume yesterday, right? This was the 12 o'clock candlestick. Oh, I thought the volume was lighter than this. Let me just double check this. Yesterday. This is yesterday. Yeah, yesterday's volume was really light. Looks like it picked up near the end of the day. Okay, that's great. Now we want to get up over yesterday's high. And then we could potentially be looking for a run right to that upper trend line. Quickly, the way Microsoft just did. MP. So nice move in here. Breaking out right now. And this is looking pretty good. Stalled in here. Stalled in here. Our first target in that range. We'll be looking at this a little bit differently now. Potentially going for our last run on this chart. Right? Potentially going up for our last run. I'd be aiming at that 3521 zone. Look at the volume yesterday. Massive volume. Tells us higher prices to come. And that's why we're seeing the gap up open. Looks like we are going for all-time high. 3521. That's the zone I'd be looking up at right now. Yep, very strong. Very strong chart right now. Let's check out that hourly. Yeah, no divergence. Right off of the 8 exponential. Those are the targets I'd be looking for. It's blue sky. As long as you hold that hourly trend, it's your friend. Amazon. Amazon, I believe, is a little bit up here in the pre-market. you like to see it a little bit more up, right? Or am I wrong about that? 3240, yeah, not really up enough. Like I would like to see it a little bit more up of a bullish futures market. But overall, what, what do you want, right? Everyone that played it, you got a good entry here. Now potential for a major breakout. We got a breakup over that daily resistance, 3250. It looks like potentially that's where we're gonna open up over. We need to get up over that upper trend line. Boom, great opportunity here. Everything's looking good. Spike in bull volume. The thing is, the way we started the video, we're looking at that NASDAQ line, that NASDAQ scenario. If the NASDAQ rejects there and starts to consolidate, what does the bear volume look like? So when Apple, Microsoft, Amazon start to consolidate because NASDAQ, well, they're all playing a part in one another, um, what does the volume look like? Is the exit volume telling us, damn, we're getting stuffed? Or is the exit volume saying, healthy consolidation, priming, getting set up for the next big move? So it looks pretty good right now. Get to get up over that daily, and then we're going to watch out for the upper trend line. All right, let's clear up this chart here because it's a mess right now. QS. This name is a lot of fundamentalist top pick for 2021. Palantir, QS. Uh, what's the other one? Fubu? Fubo? Fubu? Fubo. I'm thinking FUBU, the, the, clo the clothing. So eight exponentials holding, volumes dropping off, the sell pressure has subsided a little bit here on QS. So rounding out, seeing a little bit of a move here. We know this is our resistance zone right now, so we know we're going to not just V-shape back up unless something changes significantly with the volume. And as you can see, we have no bull volume in here. So we just look for a lower high in the chart. Now on the daily chart, we're going to need to change, you know, change the momentum in here. See a pop up, 
come back, set a higher low, and then look for continuation play. So we've got work to do. There's going to be some work to be done because we created a major supply zone in here. So right now, 67.26. And then if we see a large run and we get a spike in the volume, we start looking back up in here at the 74 zone. That's what I'd be watching right now. We do have a lower trend line that's forming in here. Okay. We do have a lower trend line that's forming in here, right in that zone. That's great. We have an upper trend line now in that zone. So if we do pop to no all-time high, that's the line I'd be watching. But as of right now, because we don't have major volume, it's a nice base. We have a higher low. We have a four-hour trend change. That's great because we were in a four-hour downward trend. And if we look at this extension target, we hit our extension target on this move, right? And I'm going to have to redraw that right there. That is not correct. And we're going to look at this here. And... Yeah, so we didn't hit the 127.2, but we hit the 1. So that makes sense right in there. And actually, if I just bring that a little bit lower. Yep, right in there. So that makes sense. We got there, but it doesn't mean our low is in right now. We're going to have to see, can we get over the 0.382? That's going to be the major focus. This zone right in here, which is also going to deal with this hourly resistance we have on that wick at 66.77 range. That's why I'd be watching on QS. BA, Joppy, it's had a nice move. It didn't get into the golden pocket, didn't get into the gap fill, stuffed us here. So we hit the 127.2 extension right there, and that's where we stalled. Evening star candles that got confirmed. It's been a slow move to the downside. Because it's slow, we start looking for that reversal pattern. The reversal pattern potentially is going to be a wedge, is going to be a channel. Let's look at this. So right now, no divergence. So when, when you're looking for that wedge, you want that divergence to come with it. But you are seeing the each new low is being bought up. And when you have each new low being bought up, it's showing you there's not strong weakness, not enough pressure to make the chart fold. So when you run out of this pressure that is there, you look for the move back to the upside. Right now, first thing we wanna do is look for that four hour trend change or look for some bull volume right now. Daily chart is still in consolidation, but we can see that weakness is starting to shape up. Just from our last move, it's still very healthy. You want it to get going in here, right? And hold the GP. And that's at 222. That's what I'd want to hold on BA. And there's a lot of tickers. So I got to get through them quickly. I'm going to end it at Jamia. And where are we? That was BA. Truel. Truel's trading at all time highs. That's looking very strong. One of the strongest MJ names out there. Daily 8 exponentials holding. Volume is good. This is all time high volume. So that's looking pretty good. Close that all time high. Bidding here and now. I think it was down like 10 cents this morning. It's bidding now 2 cents higher. Flat. Blue sky name. Uh, don't over manage it. This is one of those scenarios like PayPal. Don't over manage it. Let it develop. It's at all time highs. Allow it to continue to run. Very strong name right now. One of the favorite names in the MJ space. Looking really good. MJ is getting some more momentum on the US side. Kira, Kira made a new all-time high yesterday as well. So it's not just one name, it's the space. The space is moving in unison and that's what you always like better because one name is running, it's doing its own thing and then boom, right? But if everyone's going and it's going at a slow pace and it's not getting extended, this chart's not extended, you just let it develop. Very simple trade. DM. Um, DM. Hey Rebel, just let me know which one it is. Okay, just edit your comment and tell me if it's the TSX one or the NASDAQ one. DraftKings, so we saw some nice momentum into DraftKings yesterday. And here we are trading higher here pre-market. We closed right inside the golden pocket. So today our goal is to be to close outside the uh, golden pocket. I'll watch this trend line here and see if it's gonna come back and play. But it's a real lack of resistance. We have a gap up in that 55.85 zone. Nice bull volume, it looks continuation. I believe we're gonna run to 71. That's the ultimate play in here. Let's watch this channel. As you can see, the medium part of the channel is where we're stalling right now. So our pre-market resistance, that's another level we're gonna watch this morning once the bell rings. We could be looking for a four hour bull flag as well on DraftKings. Apple, this is, uh, this is the biggest option trade of my life. So I've never had more money in an option trade than I do in Apple right now. So every, every moment of this trade is a little bit Okay, my plank is my plank's high off the ground. So I have rationale for doing that from the chart perspective, but also the year 
Um, the amount that I'm willing to give back on the option trade, if I give that back, it still was a great year. 2020 is a fantastic trading year. Shitty social year, right? Everything about it. But anyways, I'm looking for the big move. Ultimately, the big move, I think we can get to the 136. I just really want to get over 130 because if I could get over 130, I'll feel comfortable in my position. But overall, like yesterday, we were consolidating the entire day. We were consolidating the entire day. And I was watching this consolidation. I was watching the volume set. No one's really selling. It's okay. Everything's looking pretty good. The daily chart is strong. My only concern is because I'm sized. That's it. In options, right? But they're not weekly. So they're monthly. So I would never be so crazy. Um, it's looking good. Here we are. We're trading up higher here in the pre-market. We want to break yesterday's high once the bell rings. If we hold this, we will. We're looking for continuation. It's low volume, no territory. Everything's looking good. Ultimately, the consolidation will come. NAS, same thing. If the NAS stalls there and we start to see consolidation in Apple and we don't have bull volume, what does the hourly consolidation look like? That's going to be the main focus as long as it's light. I will stay with it. A-R-R-Y. Let's check it out here. Daily chart. Nice move. Yeah, that's nice. Man, you love when they come back into a zone and that's the zone they hold. Made a new low. Bought it up. That's always a good sign when you break your support and it's immediately bought up, you run out of sellers. So now, I don't know anything about this name, but I'd be watching the golden pocket here. 41.20, what's the market cap on the same? It looks like it's a big market cap. Five billion, not that big. But I would still respect the fibs, right? I would still respect the fibs. 40, got up over it. Okay, the 0.5 is gonna be in this zone, but is there any resistance in here? Four hour chart. There's some mild little action in there, but really it's nothing. Until the golden pocket. That's what I'd be watching on 8RRY. I'm fighting his knees here. Rocket. Man, Rocket's not clean, right? This is not clean at all. Like it comes up in here, breaks, falls right back into the zone. We gotta get up over the zone. There's some still some supp supply here. There's still some sellers in this range. Right in here. There's still sellers in here. The good thing is you're hanging around the zone, right? Three days now, you're hanging around the zone. So there's gonna be a big candlestick, right? If the volume comes, there's gonna be a big candlestick because you weaken it and that's how you get that breakaway candlestick. But still, 23 is the resistance. Chart looks fine. You don't want the back test but you might have to get it. So be prepared for that. If you can't break up over that 23 zone and you start to see some bear volume coming in, that's gonna be an issue. Salesforce. Yep, you can see we dropped on earnings, very similar to the Twitter scenario, how we played it. You come back, you don't break to a new low, right? You don't break to a new low, that's exactly, that's one of my favorite chart patterns to see in terms of a weakening, weakening, a weak chart to catch the reversal because generally I don't want to play against the trend. But when you can see that the trend is weakening, then you know you're going to get that move. It's the same reason why we did the Twitter trade. Drop, little bounce, come back, unable to break, come back, unable to break, break away from the zone. And then you look for the slow move to the upside. So I like it. I like the trade idea. It's a low risk setup, but you want to go out the money calls, right? You want to go out the money calls. So if you're going to go out the money calls, you have to respect this daily higher low because then you get too far out the money, right? Then you need a 20, 25% run and it gets too far extended. So that's it. I'd really like to see that it gets a close over the eight exponential and it starts to move back to the upside. Those earnings drops and further unable to break down further is a solid trade. Always works out. And let's look at this here on F cell. So the volume's completely dropped off in F cell. Okay, so we're tightening up. It looks like we got a four hour triangle in here. We do. It looks like it just broke bull. Let me see what that would look like without extended hours. So, you know, even without extended hours, it looks like, no, if extended hours were right in there, sorry, non-extended hours were right in there. So I'd be watching that today. No matter how you draw these patterns, you want to make sure there's a reaction to the pattern. Is there any volume when it breaks? If there's no volume, then nobody cared, right? So right now, 
you're watching this resistance up over here at 869 and then 920 short term support 786. Net, net was up here in the pre-market, so that's looking pretty good. We know there's some option activity coming into the trade. I know you know that because that's one of the reasons why you're playing it. I like the setup here, right off of the lower trend line, option activity, blue sky name, four days of consolidation with no sellers. This is nothing. Look at that sell volume. It's nothing. Four days of consolidation, unable to break down. Bulls recognize this, cash on the sidelines. Name starts to see a little bit of volume, it's going to run. I would look at 87, 83, and then start taking up at 97, $100 psychological. I'm going to play net to you. Net screwed me up over here. I let go of it and then it ran. But now I think there's going to be further opportunity in here. That's a decent low risk entry right now. Off a stop under that 79.55 and that lower trend line. And look for another move to the upper trend line. That's what I'll be watching. Teladoc, everybody's on Teladoc right now, especially because of yesterday's drop, right? Everybody wanted to buy it. It's time to buy Teladoc. So we had the reversal candlestick. Gap down, reversal. Bulls came in, bought it up. We're trading up higher today. So the main focus right now is going to be to break SS high. And then you look for the easy gap fill. 8 exponential. It was in a consolidation phase down over here, right? We were dropping. We had a little bit of a rising wedge here. So there's a couple of things. One, there's the Walmart news. You know, it seems like it doesn't matter what, what it is, is whether it's the Walmart news or there's a or it's a price downgrade or something. It's always in the pattern, right? Or, you know, Citron comes out and talks about, uh, I don't remember which name it was, maybe Laser or somebody, but it's right when it has a spinning top of volume climax, right? It's perfect timing for all these things. But as of right now, the main focus would be to trade, break yesterday's high. I'm not gonna anticipate it's just gonna like run hard here because it's stalling. It's stalled in this zone. We already had, you know, a major distribution in here before it broke down, right? A struggle. So we should look for some resistance in here. So you just wanna break yesterday's high and start to gravitate back towards that zone. That's what I'd be watching. And if you're looking for an entry, a break of yesterday's high is a good short term trade at least, but then I'd be watching the eight exponential. Tesla, yeah, Tesla's gonna be on focus today and tomorrow. Uh, yesterday, so previous day, first day I haven't swung it in a long time. Yesterday, first day I didn't trade it, didn't even touch it. Um, consolidation day, and we do have the head and shoulders pattern, right? We do have the head and shoulders pattern, but we also have a triangle in here, right? So we can look for a breakout of the triangle. What I'm gonna look for is some form of buying pattern that I could see that, okay, look at the algos, they're walking it up, they're buying it up right now. And then it's gonna be an easy trade because we know it's gonna run. When the momentum comes, there's gonna be continuation in the play. And that's what I'm looking for. So instead of worrying about buying off of a higher low or off consolidation, I'm just simply now waiting to buy with momentum whenever I see it coming. Volume is dropping off, a little bit up here in the pre-market, nothing too significant. Gonna to be watching that upper trend line. If we could break up over it, we've seen some volume, we've seen some algo type buying behavior. I'm just gonna jump into shares and let it play out. BTC, uh, we started with BTC. What's up, Johnny? Haven't seen you in a while, man. AEP, American Electric, and I forgot to go back and check DM, and then we'll come to American Electric. DM on the NYSE. So big bear flag here on the daily chart, right? We should be like, you know, generally pop, drop, bounce right back up, you know, see that ABC form of a chart pattern. Uh, yesterday we tried to go upper wick, bear volume dropping off. We're going to need some bull volume. Four hour daily is four hours a major big bear flag. But you got an hourly triangle here that I could play the breakout or the breakdown, however direction you want to play this. So if we look at this, by the way, congratulations, Rebel, hitting 100% of your account. That's amazing. Yeah, something along those lines. It looks like it's not trading so well here in extended hours, but that's what I'd be watching. A little bit of an hour, four hour bear flag daily. Still looks like there should be some form of a correction back to the upside before we see a further breakdown. AEP, American Electric, daily. Okay, this has been uh, that was a nasty move. It looked like it was going to break out, go back to its pre-COVID highs, drop down, lower high, lower higher low. Higher low, this higher low is notable in here. 
So it's basing in the zone, unable to break through this zone right now. So this is the major accumulation zone in this chart, right? Bulls holding this zone. We back tested this breakout, held, came back, higher low. I'd want to respect my stop in that range. I'd even use that one there, 81, 82. Okay. Because then you start to go down. You know, you could use the 80 as well. So yesterday was not the best candlestick, but there's not a lot of sell sell volume, right? It looked like you had opportunity to go. It got stuffed. Here we are trading slightly higher. You want to break yesterday's high. There's still some sellers in here, right? You want to break yesterday's high. You could be potentially looking for some form of a triangle to form in here. Like you could see this on the four hour chart and see how that plays out, right? What you would do it, looking at it from this perspective in here, right? And see if you got something, let's get that magnet off so we could draw it. You know, you got something developing in here. We'll see where that top comes. Maybe that's gonna be it right there. And then you use it from that perspective. That's what I'd be watching on AEP. MGNI, Magnite, daily, reversal candlestick yesterday. Okay, nice support in this range. Previous breakout zone, no, it was a gap. So we ran through the gap and we consolidated back into the gap. Lower high, higher low, reversal candlestick, trading a little bit up, 2072. We could trade in this range and set up a channel moving sideways. We could do that, 2072 resistance. That's gonna be the main focus today. If you don't break it, then I would anticipate we are gonna trade in this range. Hang out in here, then you look for, is it accumulation pattern? distribution pattern and then you have a clear move on a break volume is dropping off it can continue to just completely taper off which would mean we will trade sideways roku saw a message here that says roku fsr big candle okay fsr running that's exactly what we talked about it does it in the pre-market so let's see if fsr is going to have a big day Okay, Roku, daily chart, 344. Yeah, this is like, just let it develop, right? It just, it keeps going. It keeps going. 344. So we're now we're looking up at 359. That's the next target. Blue sky name, all-time highs. Little bit of bearish divergence on the daily chart, but very mild. Nothing too significant. Four-hour trend. Looks really good. Right now you're just watching that pre-market resistance. But if you're in the trade, like Roku is kind of like a regret trade for me because I was like, man, we're playing Roku at the hundreds. One little thing to do differently in 2021, reduce size to allow these names to have major opportunity to run. So maybe that's gonna be the Fubo, that's gonna be the QS, that's gonna be the Palantir, that's gonna be the Jumia, those names. The problem is I like to go aggressive, right? I go aggressive, so focus on not too many names, but if you wanna just allow portfolio names to run, you gotta do with small shares, especially when these these are all high beta stocks that we're talking about. No one's asking me to look at you know, CIBC or TD Canada Trust, BMO Bank of Montreal, right? That would be boring. Roku, that's it. Now we'd be watching those two tweezers. You wanna break that level here in the pre-market. Eventually it'll top, right? And, but when it tops, you're gonna look for the clear topping pattern, volume climax, reversal candlestick, losing the daily eight exponential, something along those lines. Space. So I think we had some Chamath sold or is selling, sold 3.8 million shares or is in the process of selling. So we need to understand let me just double check that really quickly. And I'm probably pronouncing his name wrong, so. Shemath or Chemath. Um, please note, I filed a form four for sale of 3.8 million shares. I sold these shares. I sold these shares. Okay, they've already been sold. So we know we had an event and we had some selling pressure, which is a lot of shares. It's a lot of shares. So now that that's behind us, we wanna see if the chart can get flowing again. 2566 here trading in the pre-market. Do not want to lose the zone. 2361, do not want to lose the zone. So it's fine. Base out in here and then look for a move back up. We can break to a low as long as we get no fall through and hold the golden pocket. 
Fastly. Uh, we're waiting for the volume on Fastly. You can see the volume's completely dropped off. Huge gap in here. It's one of my top charts. As soon as I see something, I'm just triggering in uh, common shares. Um, we're going to be looking for that move. So yesterday, I know somebody pointed out that it was running early. And the main thing for me yesterday was to not believe it and not get into the trade was I looked at the volume. So when I've seen Fastly run, right? Look at the volume. Look at that volume candlestick. Look at the, and now you look at these. There's a very clear sign to tell you not much is happening. So when you see a little bit of a spike, like what we saw yesterday, why does it immediately come down? Well, because there's no buying. So the, the people that bought in here, what do they do? It's like, oh, there's nobody buying and we have and we hit a supply zone. There's no more buyers, supply zone drop, everyone sells in, it just comes right back down. That's what happens. So the main thing guys to watch here is look at the volume. Look at that volume. Even this one still ran a little bit. This one ran just a little bit, ran. Now look at it, like there's nothing down here. So we're looking for a major shift in this buying volume pattern. And when we see exciting volume, we anticipate there's a 10, 20% day about to happen. And that's what we're looking for on Fastly. All right. Laser. Luminaire Technologies. So this is that one, I think, the Citron came right at the top, right when it was doing the volume climax anyways, right? It was going to do it perfectly. And then they come in and say, hey, we told you so. Well, yeah. Any technical analysis trader would have told you so at the same time as well. So here we go. Big drop. Should see a little bit of a bounce back, right? There should be some form of a correction back to the upside. So I would be looking for this downward momentum to pause. Starting to pause right now. Getting over the 8 exponential, right? You like to see a little bit of bull volume to come in. And then you start looking for a retracement, right? A retracement. In this, in this case, I would just look at the 0.236 right now because the 0.382 is so far away. So in this case, I would just look right there, 2790, that's the zone. If you're in already, you, it's not something you just wanna let mature, but you just watch that 30 minute trend. 30 minute trend can help keep you in because you're setting up 30 minute higher low, higher low, and see if you can find that 30 minute higher low here, get a 30 minute higher high, and you look for continuation of that play. That's what I'd be watching there. What name is it? Fans. Fan Suite. So we had some, I think this was hyped too due to the bill. The bill has been pushed to 2021. So it's likely to be a good runner in 2021 as well. Right now, upper wick, upper wick, upper wick. So we're seeing pressure from above. So we're seeing some sellers. Volume isn't too significant. So we could potentially look to trade sideways, trade in a descending triangle formation where we would look at our support down in here. And then we would look for that upper trend line, you know, if we're gonna use the wicks in there and then allow that to develop. So we're still seeing pressure from above, not gonna break out unless you see major volume. And I know this name likely was running because of that bill. It's postponed for now. So I would look for a con consolidation phase to continue. Only thing I would say that changes that is to see consistent bull volume. That looks like bull volume, but that's a huge upper wick. So that's sell pressure, sell volume as well. JNH and then Jumia. Jack Nathan Health Medical Corp, daily chart, really fading here. Okay, could call it a little bit of a wedge, but you don't have bullish divergence. So it looks like, you know, right in there, you got a lower trend line. Not perfect, but you do have a little bit of a wedge in here. I'd want to hold that lower trend line. Volume's completely dropping off, so it could take one candlestick to push it right back up. I'd be a little bit interested off of the lower trend line, but I'd be more interested once I see some bull volume coming in because it's just slowly fading. There's not a lot happening in here. Jamia. Daily chart. Trading at all-time high, 39.80. And 41.09 is our all-time high. No, not all-time high. All-time high is over here. We're close. Hey, it's the Amazon of Africa. It's being pumped on Twitter by a Notorious Pumper. So right now, you're getting that momentum. 
Fundamentals, are they good? People like the fundamentals? Okay, then it's going to be a big mover. 41, that's the level we want to get up over right now. And then we start looking at our top, all-time high. You like the momentum. The volume is there. We're holding the eight exponential. Higher low, higher low, higher low. Want to see the continuation and not get stuffed at this 41 zone because it could sell quickly. We've seen it before, but it's a strong name right now. And it's got heavy pumps behind it. Square, because Gerald came in late. Square is all time high, man. That upper trend line, potentially is going to be our support now. That's looking really good. Something not to overmanage, like a PayPal, not to overmanage, unless you start to see some exit volume. One of those trades, you kind of just want to be in and let it develop. Let's look at this here. Yeah, that looks pretty good. That looks pretty good. Like if we look at a target in here, you know, maybe right in here, we'll look for this target now, which would be 236 and then 248. That's what I'd be watching. And ideally now that trend line becomes support. Let's see that in there. That's what I would want. All right, guys, let's have a great day. Peace out, everybody. I'll see you in the chat.